That working. Let me make sure this is that seems to be working. Usually the person. Hello and welcome. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL. And wow, we have people already here, like starting like immediately. If you guys are watching this um, in the future, um, thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, try to make it for the live things because we have way more fun in the uh, live videos. And look, we got chatbots running. We are going. This is awesome. All right. So. Everything sound is okay? All right. Got uh, my wife over here, double checking, making sure that everything's working as it's supposed to. Um, I do not have any new pictures of this as I've only taken it and shifted it over as I completed rows. Um, to actually get a photo of this thing is, you know, like me holding it up like last time, which was, wait, I have a, I have a picture for that. Me with a number two. Oh, Peter didn't recognize it. So like this photo, right? The thing about that is to get it actually off of the, the board to do that photo is really kind of hard because there's so much string laying around this whole thing. Um, yeah, but the good news is I can see the other end just around this corner. So we are, how far are we into it? Good question. We are, okay, let's go back to that picture. The, on the right hand side, that length or depth that it has, height, height, I guess, that makes, that makes the most sense. The height is the halfway point. So, um, yeah, it means we still have a lot to go. I, I've noticed like the number of like subscribers and stuff to the channel has gotten way slow. Um, and I got to believe that that's, you know, people are just like, oh, he's still doing that. I get it. But I'm here to answer other questions. We can have fun. We got the, the game, the, this one, the secret word game, where if you guess the magic word, you win the bracelet. So that's kind of fun. Um, what else we got? Yeah, a lot of questions and answers and stuff. Seems that when I posted this picture over on Facebook, I think I've gotten the most likes I've ever gotten um, for the bracelet making community ever. Like that, it, it was last time I looked, it was over 250 likes. That's huge, it, especially considering like I've done big projects in the past and I, I'm kind of, I don't know. I thought they were pretty cool, but apparently people like this one better. So, yay. So what I got, I'm gonna add some string here. So I've only, I've done half of the knot. I'm just gonna lay this off to the side because I need to change up these, this orange here. And this is the one where the white goes down through the middle instead of the orange. Otherwise I'd have waited until, you know, a little bit later on, but it is different. So it makes for a good example. About. Oh, did, did we, where's the bot? <laughs> okay. Um. Ah, uh, Rainbow, you're you're so close, and um, you're so close. I could, I 
I couldn't count for that. That was funny. I I'm, I'm suddenly got really confused for a second. So wait, so we were just talking about big projects on Megan Morris's live stream. Megan Morris, I don't know who that is. Is that a bracelet maker? <laughs> Wait, is it gonna do it? Where's the bot? It's still? Oh, shit. So now you got me wondering if I did things right. Ah, you guys, you girls are killing me. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm over here dying. Makes crafts, okay. Oh, okay. So it is a bracelet person. Is... Yeah. I'm waiting for the bot to come to get to life. What the hell? Did I spell it? You guys have got it. I spell it? Oh, I think you actually have... Okay, I think Amanda had it right where she was trying to put the word first, but if you can't... I think because it's a uh, computer command that it's not recognized... Wait, because I think that... Rainbow spelled it right, right? But it didn't activate the the bot because it wasn't the first word. Yes, I can't spell either, and that's why I just went to go double check to make sure it wasn't me, because I can't spell. So who who gets the who gets the prize? Who is the first one? Rainbow. Rainbow wins. So <laughs> this so so did not go as planned because I wanted to record the chat where it happened and be like, yay, we got a winner. We, but, and, and, and we're still gonna, yeah, that's the, that's the, there we go. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I have no idea why it's not doing the, the bot, I have no idea what the hell is going on there. I I know I put it in there right. And yes, you guys are clever enough to think of that one. The funny thing was, um, um, I put this in a couple weeks ago. And this was before I actually posted an a, a anniversary picture of me making the bag um, for my wife. And in that picture, I, I had wore it like a crown and it's all hanging down. And Amanda had said, oh, I get why you use the word Rapunzel. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that's, I had done it with the very first bag and that's where that all had happened from. And so I was like, maybe I made this word too easy because it's actually came up just days later in Instagram, but then nothing happened. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm really curious now why I even did it where the way you could spell it could have like a capital or a lower case. Let's just double check. Yeah, I don't, that's so weird. You got me completely confused, but yes. Okay, so we have a winner. That's awesome. The bracelet is right here. It is absolutely one of the cooler bracelets. It's pretty big. It's 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 big and it's thick. So kind of 
thick like the stream bot that can't that's so weird i need to figure out i need to make it so that way it doesn't have to be the first um word in the sentence either that that doesn't seem very fair so yeah i got some i got some work but yeah we'll have a new bracelet starting next week and um yeah i kind of I, I, you know what really bothered me the most was the notion of trying to give a hint because I felt like any word that I tried to, to give as a hint, like I, I ended up, the hint was like, it's on my website. And I'm like, even that's like kind of narrows it down so much, you know, because I, I wanted it to be r r related to my work, you know, so it, it was, you know, you guys had a lot of like clever things you know last week you know you were trying but yeah so okay now i'm going to add a blue here just kind of like before just half of it then put on the loop then tie my knot and then slip the half through there we go so yeah, that was that was hilarious. I'm not sure how we'll. I was gonna try to do like a video short to get people excited for next week's after like there was a winner. But um, the chat just did. Ah, uh, whatever. It's all good. You guys are awesome. The fact that my stupid bot isn't saying what he's supposed to say. At least let's put him put him to work anyways. There you go. Make him parade across the whole screen. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you know, it's upside down because uh, I'm wearing a cool bracelet that's from Amanda. Super, super awesome work. Is there anywhere you want to link people, Amanda, to where they can acquire your knotting work? I feel like I should get with you after the the stream and find out what your other 10 words were because I'm not sure what to use next. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely I love the the bracelet. I um Definitely proud to show it off. So you may notice there is an awful lot of string being added on all at once. And that's because basically um, there's not a lot of room to do it, you know, because it changes up the colors. So I basically have to change out the orange and so it's two oranges and four blues in this one square. So this is, it's a little bit tricky, but it's not impossible. Oh, wait, this was supposed to be a white one. She does have Instagram. Wait, I missed something. Uh... Oh, well, it makes them for fun. But she does have an Instagram. Really? Well, that's... Rainbow Haze does have an Instagram as well. Look at this, we're, we're linking people together. This is awesome. Totally cool stuff.
Um, not entirely sure how it works on YouTube, whether or not you're allowed to get away with putting in stuff or not, or if it's the bot's fault, the bot might be. No, wife says no, I don't know. Let's see if I can. I'll try to zoom in a little bit here for you guys so you can see this. Despite having added so much string, there's really no sign of it in the work itself. So that's kind of cool. You have just that right there is totally one of the things that really I, I as a creator um, it makes me insane earlier today somebody on the picture I told you that I posted in one of the bracelet making groups on Facebook said that they would love to actually watch the live stream and um, when is it and what I wanted was to get the link to the live stream like I can on my desktop, obviously. And, um, but I wasn't, I was on my phone. And for the life of me, there's no place you can go to actually get it. So, yeah, that was, that was bad. Hello, Amaris. Good morning. Yeah, no, there are still things that are oddly computer wins over mobile and then it is annoying especially considering how much like um my website actually does like analytics stuff like who's watching and from where and yeah there's it, it really is becoming more and more people using their phone even over tablets or anything else it's it's really seriously a lot of people use their phone Cool. All right. Got another bit of string added. Ooh. This red is very short. That's obviously got to get changed. What's the next one? Oh, easy peasy. So to anybody who missed last week's or recent videos, this I cut a hole through the, the board that I have attached to the easel. So that way, when a string is been attached enough, I can slip it through the hole in the back and it gets it out of the way and keeps me from accidentally tying to the wrong thing. It's been super, super helpful. Another short one. Orange. That's gonna be harder. trick you're trying to get the string to go in the back is to do it where it goes back without messing up the string that stays it's not a big deal it's just something to keep an eye out for really a 
Yeah. Kind of loot stuff or something going on with the music. Kind of cool. It sounds like a song I know, though. I, I recognize like a, a tune out of that. I'm not sure what the song is, but. So now I'm going to add a blue going the other direction. And it's really easy. My method is simple. I just do half of the knot. And I take the other string. And I put the two ends together. Because all my string is all doubled up. And it's for the whole purpose of being able to add strings, really. And making it thicker. So I loop it on to the string that's underneath. And I tie the knot. And I like to do it where it's the same color because on the very edge of the knot, there's just a little bit of that color there. But since it's of the same, you know, blue on blue, you don't see it. If I try to add the blue where it's a white, you'll see just a little touch of blue there. And it's a, it's a dead giveaway. Makes it where somebody would be able to be like, aha, that's where you added the string. And since I don't want anybody to actually recognize where it happens, um, I'm very cautious about where I make the selections. And that's why, like, right now, you know, you see all these strings hap getting changed at the moment because this is a, a spot where it can be done at my discretion when I want it, when I need it. Um, if I wait for... Um, when the string is too short, I might not get that choice. So that's kind of an important thing when doing something like this is to recognize a good opportunity. I don't count. I just could get, I could, I could get my face furry. No. You guys, uh, I, I lack a Mandy cam. This is something I, I think I need to save up for. A little camera to point over in this direction over here. Um, because the look that I just got, yeah, no. <laughs> it would have been worth seeing. You guys, you guys would have paid to have seen it. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I've been trying to think of like what it would be a decent pet that doesn't require all the attention and stuff like a dog and cats necessarily do or parrots for that matter that could be fun to interact with and, and enjoyable to have in their home but that isn't going to get too traumatized if you go off on a holiday or something because like I know people who have dogs and cats and stuff and they go off you know for whatever work or pleasure and the poor animal just loses its freaking mind so like yeah I'm kind of I would like that to think that someday you know in the not too far future that we can go back to leaving our home you know, for more than a couple days kind of thing. I kind of feel like the wife already has her hands full with me. Like there's no need for having an additional pet. Like I'm already a lot of work. Houseplant. Yeah, see? Well, I have a fish tank. I have a great big 50 gallon fish tank. And um, that's pretty fun. I like my fish tank. 
Wife says it doesn't count because you can't pet them. Yeah, but I can take care of my fish and have it set for a month without needing to do much of anything. I just have to put one of those, um, the thing that gives the food every day and they wouldn't miss me. In fact, they tend to like, if I, as I approach the tank, they get, well, first thing in the morning when it's time for feeding them, they get all sorts of super excited. They get, you know, they're, they're going crazy. But as I get closer to the tank, they start getting nervous and kind of freak out and kind of duck around the thing until the food hits the top of the water and they're like woohoo it is for food yay you know like he hasn't come to kill us this time so um but yes they they would not care if i'm if i used a machine to feed them yeah they'd probably be happier than they are now we have we had guppies they are slowly getting weaned out but by the angelfish we have freshwater angels The wife might be able to actually tell you the actual kind of angels. They're like, they're the closest to the nature ones. So they're black and white stripes with a touch of orange on the top. Yeah, they, we don't get too attached to them. They don't get too attached to us. If one, if a fish dies, nobody cries. Well, I say that. I get a little bummed. There's some that, you know, like Mr. Reddington over here. Um, I think I'd be really heartbroken if something happened to him. Have, do you know he's been here for more than a year now? Mr. Reddington? Yeah, pandemic time is so weird. Like, honestly, it, it does not feel like it. the time, the actual time that has gone by is real. Um, my fish that I keep here in the office with me is a betta and um, I just recently saw an anniversary thing through Facebook saying that uh, you know there was a image or something from a year ago so I know it's been over a year because uh, it wasn't like a oh here's my fish I just got it was it was something else but still Birds flying into the house to eat the fish? Oh, I do want to hear more of this. This, that sounds amazing. I can't even... What kind... Did... I, I want cameras. I want to see what kind of birds come in. A silky chicken would be fun. Um, I actually have... Um, kind of looked at like how that works and stuff like how they're they're supposed to be like pets that would be fun and if they get too out of line you know like you know destroy your house or something chicken rice I'm telling you hell yeah uh, maybe uh, it's a, that black meat though right so it's better for, is, it, is it always done in the soup or can you do chicken rice with it? no okay soup chicken soup it is Silky chickens are way cool. I've, I've seen some videos on that. It's way cool. No, but I was thinking something furry. I was thinking more like maybe um, like a chinchilla. I don't know. I don't know much about him. I had a friend who had one. And I don't even think he kept it all that long. Um, really? I would not have picked mine as, as being a bird that goes for fish even in a shallow environment.
Rainbow, if I had a chance to come to England, you know goddamn well you would let me pet and play with the dog and you'd wander off. I'd still be, you know, whatever. But yeah, no, um, we just, I, I was thinking like a chinchilla because one, it's something we're allowed to have. We can't have things like ferrets. Ferrets would be fun. Ferrets don't give a, they really don't care if you're around or not. They just sleep all day. Really because of the, uh, the thick fur? I see, I don't know. I see them at the pet shops. Everybody, they all, a lot of pet shops have them. I don't think I went like a guinea pig. Those things are... I don't know. I've never met a guinea pig that was like happy to be handled or touched. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong in that one. Hamsters are a little too small to whatever. If I was going to do a hamster, then I would want to do the, the what do they call it? Have a trail? Have a trail. Have stupid little plastic piping everywhere. I've actually seen that with ferrets, but no, can't have ferrets here. You also can't have hedgehogs. I'd love to have a hedgehog. Those things are cute. Except for the wife would kind of freak out about the whole keeping their food. Really? See, I've never seen that. I, I, I go to like the pet stores where they have like the open bin thing or whatever and you go like to reach in there and they just turn around and snap at you and, and try to bite your hand and stuff. And like, like, nope, 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 nope. Aww. Really? That's cute. One long orange and one short one. All right. Um, and I need is this red line. Nope. Short. Okay. So I need two red and an orange. I have a friend. We have a friend who has rabbits. Um, Mandy can tell you. Like she's she's actually been bitten by by one of her rabbits. Um, they're pretty cool, I guess. I don't know enough about them to consider, like, whether or not that's fun or not. I would be traumatized if I got bitten like that. That's why basically rodents just kind of freak me out. Like they just, if like I think squirrels are cute, but then I saw one that was hit by a car and like those front teeth, like holy crap, man! This thing could like take your finger off. Like that's cutest thing I saw in England and I've never seen anywhere else as a pet were chipmunks those are cute I thought they were like they still need to rot to gnaw right don't their teeth keep growing that's a rodent so because they were cute they didn't want to get chucked in the same category with rats that's cheating. It's still... Really? 
the wife is telling me that no I think somebody just didn't want to lunk them in with the rats Yeah, squirrels can be hella bad, like just absolutely buck wild crazy stuff. Um, one came into our house once and um, immediately it regretted it, totally went spastic, couldn't figure out how to get back out even though, you know, like the door where it came in was still open and just went running amok and because like the windows there's you know source of light or whatever running up the drapes and just shredding things and total spaz mode so yeah I know. unlike say a ferret where you pick it up by the back of its neck and the whole thing just gets limp and and you know the only only bad thing i ever had with the ferrets was them getting a hold of car keys and hiding them on me like they're always looking for something to hide always that's just their nature you can't even get mad at them for it because they're just doing what comes natural to them i don't know why they do it why they must hide everything but it's Yeah. Oh, I have no doubt that a squirrel could. No doubt that a squirrel could just... Well, you look at, at some of the stuff that they eat, right? If you ever... Um, what is the... At Christmas time, you got the, the the bowl of nuts, right? And there's this that great big... What do they call it? Monkey's toe or something? What's what's the big nut in the, in the assorted nut bag that comes for the holidays? You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? There's a big dark brown one or whatever. Squirrels can just like crack into this thing like it's nothing. They just like bite into it. Honestly, I got to believe that that's way tougher than any, you know, digit. And the fact that they're like on the ground close to my feet, like, the, and I'm in a tropical place where like wearing flip flops is kind of normal yeah i'm that kind of stuff really even just the rabbit i think would have me freaking out that my toes would be in jeopardy uh So what's, okay, so if the gray ones are the invasive ones, what is the, the normal British squirrel? The red one? Like in Michigan, we had like a reddish brown and then a black one and a gray one. And I always wondered like whether or not they had ethnic whatevers, you know, like, I think we don't like those guys. Or do they mix? Because that would be way cooler if they mixed. Yeah, the angels are gorgeous. They really are fun. And they can get rather big. I just recently learned that England has otters. I had no idea.
Yeah, I suspect that squirrels and stuff would be a lot further up towards the north. Like when I drove up to Hartley Pool, um, we passed by like the, the legendary forest where um, Robin Hood was supposed to be from or whatever, and lots of, you know, real nature, nature stuff. So yeah, up that way, probably more likely to see squirrels. I was just thinking, yeah, the squirrels down by you, what are they, they going to eat? They're going to go down to the beach, you know, and the, those nuts aren't edible. <laughs> God damn it, there's a nut in my string here. There we go. Got it. Of course, the, uh, the actual other alternative for pets is obviously things like a cat, where um, around here, it seems like nobody really keeps a hat, the cats in their home. And so like, like they, well, I'm sure maybe some people do, but like, it's a lot more common to have a cat that kind of goes in and out. And I just realized here recently that this one cat that, would like come by and visit us and stuff. I haven't seen it, you know, like just thinking about it, right? The fat boy? Yeah, I don't, have you seen him recently? I haven't seen him in probably almost a month now. And that's, that's the thing, you know, like you get attached to an animal and stuff, like it can be all independent and just wander off on you. That's no, that sucks. But yeah, there was this cat. He, he's absolutely gorgeous. And I wouldn't be surprised if somebody came along and was like, you know what? He doesn't deserve to be outside. He needs to be in my house all the time and just kept him or whatever. That If that was the case, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But um, he was the neighbor's cat. Like the neighbor had space in their house and, and whatever. Um, but the cat always wanted to go out and so they let him out and now he's gone and then that same thing happened um uh charcoal our charcoal kitty little tiny runt of a cat this gorgeous color gray um she just up and disappeared one day and then months later we saw flyers saying that you know that the house where it was staying at it went missing and then now we've seen it two or three times since, so you know. Yeah, I, sus I mean, uh, I suspect you're right. I, I suspect there probably is a lot more cats than we see. I, you know, I, I'm not entirely sure like what's the actual, like, you're not supposed to have cats, right, in HDB, am I right? Like, by technicalities? Right. What I do is I, okay, so I like dogs because they're far easier to please than a cat. Cats can be all finicky and whatever. But I'd have to admit though, like living as close as we do to our neighbors here in Singapore, I would have to say that a cat would be great because it's quieter, you know, as long as it's getting food or whatever else, cats don't tend to make a lot of noise, unlike Say you get a pug or something and they just, they hear a noise outside, they lose their flipping mind.
Yeah, and we had we had a community cat that we were rather attached to. Like whenever I was doing my leather products and stuff, like when I did the the guitar straps and stuff, I um, would punch the leather downstairs. And this cat would just hang out with us for the whole time, like have to inspect the whole thing I'm working with and like hang out with us and whatever else. And then um, I, my understanding is that there were some wild dogs that were in Yishun Park that started running and terrorizing the neighborhood. And um, my understanding is, is that those dogs killed the cat. So, yeah. But yeah, this was a this was a cat that if it saw us, it would come running. It wouldn't just like meander over. It, it would come running over to get it the lovins and stuff. So, and then and then it got killed. Yeah, it was pretty heartbreaking. And again, that same neighbor who has been taking care of the last one, um, they they found the cat or whatever and tried to take it to the vet and tried to save it, but it was too far gone. Yeah, totally heartbreaking stuff. Hence, fish are so much easier. You don't get all that same mushy feels mind you i'm there are like more whatever bigger fish and stuff that you can have i'm just not a fan of fish eating other fish So in the space of two squares, I managed to change out four blue, two, uh, four orange, and two red. Which, oh yeah, I, I really need to check last week's video because I threw out the piece of paper and I'm not sure if this, the, the skein count is right. Because the notes say 464, plus I just cut 25. But what I don't know is, is that 464, is that got the 120 skeins that I cut or not? So we're either at 489 skeins or just below 600. Not sure. If anybody remembers last week, if you remember how many skeins, that would be amazing. But I, the fact that I actually have to go through and watch a whole video of my own kind of bums me out a bit because it's just to find out how many strings there were. Yeah, she'll probably see it later. Like I said, I love cats. I, in the neighborhood here, um, if we're heading out for lunch or whatever, Mandy can tell you, like, I, I am the first one to stop and say, no, hang on a second. I can't go anywhere until I, you know, the cat says that it's okay to leave. And, um, and there's a whole mess of them that, you know, I'll take the time for.
but I just I don't as far as having a cat in the house I just feel like I spend so much of my time locked away in this you know in this room here working on stuff and Mandy worked spends so much time you know locked away in our bedroom you know slash off other office um all the time and these are the two places we wouldn't want the cat to be so then the cat's not going to get attention during the day and uh, that's just not fair so like whatever animal we get it needs to be seriously low maintenance or low what's the word for that less needy something i don't know i don't i don't know what the word is for it like the ferrets were the ferrets loved attention when you gave it to them but if you left them alone and let them sleep they'd be happy too so there's not a lot of pets like that would you be happy with a hamster the only way i'd be happy with a hamster is get, going through aliexpress and buying every tube every whatever I, like lego set i would have it where they could go from one end of the house to the other right but it's also low reward it might be fuzzy petting stuff or low but it's not a like yeah yeah, ferrets were awesome. Ferrets are way cool. They're they'll look like they're trying to attack you and all bouncy and stuff, but then they're bouncing backwards until they can get like near a couch or something they can dart under. Like they just they try to look tough, but they're really kind of wimpy and stuff. They're really cute. They're a lot of fun. They do have a funny I don't everybody likes to say that they stink and i i argue they don't stink but they have a distinct smell Mind you, what I envision, like if I had my own way to do whatever, um, I could imagine like the way I have my current fish tank set up is there's a planter on either side of the tank that's actually supplied water from the fish tank itself. Um, I could see in a dream house having better plumbing for the whole tank setup and make it a bigger area where it would be more plants and more tropically bits like what's the shop at vivo the, the massage place that's got the thing in the window in the front Do you remember? There's, there's a shop at, at the mall here in singapore where it's about three four inches of water for some fish and the whole rest of it is ferns and stuff it's absolutely gorgeous i would love to have something like that in my house like you know forget having pets just have like a wall with plants and stuff on it right Oh, and that's another thing that we have to take into account. And like, you know, um, whenever I go over to our friend's house who has like five dogs, by the end of the evening, I'm clawing at my face. I'm, I'm literally just, it ruins me and I have to take like a Benadryl or something. So it's, okay, like a terrarium is like a dry thing. This is completely more tropical, like with water dripping and stuff. It's it's way different. Hello, Alp.
Yeah, I wish I could remember what the shop. There's Amanda, you're you're in Singapore. If you ever go out to Vivo, there's a there's a like massage place, and right next to where the um, what do you call those? The receptionist. You'll see this. It's beautiful. It's it's got ferns and I can't think of what the one things are. Bromeliads, bromeliads, and that kind of stuff. So it's really super super cool, and I would love to have that in my home. I think it would be amazing. Sorry, Alp. We were having fun talking about pets and other non-bracelet related stuff. You just happened to come right in in the middle of it all. Hello and welcome. You, you missed me adding a lot of string up here, by the way, which might have been kind of cool. You'll have to rewatch the video if you were interested in that stuff. Yeah, right? That's exactly. That's why I'm kind of recapping as to where, you know, that's the beauty of live stream is, is that we can talk about virtually anything and it can be fun it doesn't have to be all string related although i do try to show what it is that's happening in case anybody's coming for the information because from what i gathered from the facebook group is a lot of people don't know how to add string like when it gets too short Say it's a small world but we're talking about an island here which is actually small that's way cool yeah I'm, i happen to be in ishun so i may have may have left detroit but still ended up somewhere a little bit ghetto Yeah, if we're trying to be totally honest here, I'm probably way more into the fish and having, you know, Mandy says it's it's like a, a science experiment, you know, the, because there's like very little feels or whatever involved. Um, but for me, I I way cool with it. So the reality is 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 we're trying to find a pet that my wife would be happy with that doesn't require me having to do a whole lot of stuff and including trying to give it lots of attention. So yeah, that's the nutshell of that whole, whole thing. Cause she, she had a Papillon, a real pretty dog with the butterfly ear thing. And it was awesome. And it, it could pretty much fit into that kind of category. It, it was, you know, it would let you know if it wanted attention and, that wasn't much of the time but dogs are kind of you know some are really awesome like that and yeah see i don't know what the options are like if i had when i was in the states i had ferrets they were given to me by somebody who didn't want to have to take care of them any longer um but they were awesome they were like they were a lot of fun but unfortunately those aren't allowed here in singapore so yeah i'm if we did a dog, it would have to be something really small because my wife was born with a brittle bone. So anything that can knock her over um, is out of the question. And like, even if it's small, like say like a Jack Russell or something, right? Um, that would be out of the question because those things are totally super hyper crazed, whatever. There you go. Wait, can it be dad?
What's a terrapin? What's a terrapin? Oh. oh. Would you like a turtle, honey? Is it? Do you like turtles? Toitus? If you just snuggle me instead, you know. Yeah. No, that's why I say it's the, it has to be a real mellowed out kind of dog. And like a, like a Chihuahua would be like size wise and stuff. Okay. But those, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just the ones that I've met that are cool. Right. Yeah, if you could get a golden retriever down to the size of a chihuahua, then we'd be like, yeah. Yeah, same. Not only that, but they're like a little bit stupid. Like, can't, you know, try to jump on the up to the couch, you know. A thousand times and every single time lands on its head it still doesn't stop trying <laughs> what now I'm picturing that the uh, Disney movie what, what was what was the Disney movie with the ghost dog Was the Frankenstein one? No, there's one. The they were they were like a married couple, and their their dog was a ghost, which actually looked like the Frankenweenie dog. You know, yeah, that might. Dash sounds are cute. They're loud. No, it wasn't Casper. There's, there's, um, might not, I'm pretty sure it's Disney. It, you know, like a Pixar type thing. Kind of darker Tim Burton. No, he's like a Frankenstein. There's one where it looks like a little sheet floating along behind the, the, try Corpse's Bride. Or the corpse is something. Yes. Corpses, the, is it called corpses? The corpse bride has a ghost dog. There might be one in the nightmare before Christmas. Don't. Yeah, so those are all right up the same, yeah, that same dark Christmassy fun thing, yeah. But Frank and Weenie was supposed to be like Frankenstein, except for it was a dog. So not exactly a ghost, more like a living dead thing. Nightmare Before Christmas is definitely a contender but there was something in there's like um one of them's called the corpse's bride or the corpse's bride yeah oh corpse bride that's it's nice when you have a research department like right here again we need another camera we just need one more just the little mandy cam show you the research department 
<laughs> and I just got to look again. All right. Oh, Gothic Song, I made it. Hello. Oh, now that more people are here, um, let me just mention the fact that the secret word game has been won. Um, it was Rainbow Haze Shop went and guessed the magic word, which was Rapunzel, which the interesting part was there was a whole big skew of not spelling it correctly <laughs> before that went. I, and I'm like going, why isn't the computer, why isn't it happening? Well... Yeah, the, the spelling was off a little bit, but the spelling was finally hit and um, the bracelet has been won and that was fun. And next week we'll come up with another fun word to use and play that all over again, except for I'm going to have to see if there's a way of making it so that way the command doesn't have to come at the start of the sentence. Oh, was it the talk about the the wild dogs that came and got one of our favorite cats? We had an upsetting story where the demise of a kitty happened here, and uh, we were pretty bummed about it. Kind of scooting along pretty well. Yeah, it was it was a it was a cat that like would recognize me and the wife and come not just like trot over like almost a, a run to come over and get attention and stuff from us and when i did like the, the guitar straps and stuff spent the afternoon with us and stuff but yeah poor thing something a little less depressing um, no it started at the same time we don't have daylight savings Singapore time stays the same all year long That's because we're one degree off of the equator, which makes our daylight roughly 12 hours. It's There is a slight variation because we're one degree to the north, but it's not much. Sun sets like 7.30, gets, comes up at like 7.30, give or take, really. don't understand why daylight savings is still a thing it doesn't it doesn't make much sense and I'm from Detroit like I remember the whole thing you know but 
doesn't make much sense to me at all. Well, isn't it easier to adjust to, to the daylight saving time in the fall because you actually get an extra hour of sleep than it is to try to convert in the spring? At least that's kind of how I remember it. Yeah, yeah. Pets don't don't like daylight savings at all. I imagine. Can you imagine the farms? Like, honestly, feeding the cows, doing all that kind of stuff. think so the daylight savings time is could just be the normal time and then you know the summer as long as it is or whatever it could just be whenever those hours are like there's no need to move it around you know just because it's dark at four and then you just change an hour then it's dark at five Either way, it's still dark before you get out of work, so it doesn't really save a whole lot of whatever if you're doing a 9 to 5. I mean, I remember, like, coming out of work and it being dark and going home, like, not seeing light through the whole work week, you know, and then, you know, making a big to-do of trying to get the most of it during the, the weekends, but... change up my yellows here. Let me get some yellow string. So, because this is so close to the center, I'm going to change two strings at once. So, to do that, I'm going to go to the to the left with this knot. I just do half the knot. Yeah, I've heard that cats are really good about like being on time with things. If you if you always feed them at a certain time or whatever, they're really good to the point that if you need to take medication at a certain time, just make it coincide with when you feed your cats and they will always make sure that you know that that time is there because they're good like that.
Yeah, I, I lived in Detroit, believe me. I, And not even like a good area of Detroit. So trust me when I say I, I totally get the whole not wanting to go out in the dark. Um, like hear gunshots on a fairly regular basis. Kind of. Detroit. So yeah, no, I, I totally get the whole feel of like the daylight thing and whatever but that's not to say that you couldn't let's say you you move the time zone to where the sun is out until six at, at its lowest point which is the short the longest night is december 21st so if you make that your 6 p.m or whatever then the whole rest of the year can just be bent around that like that just just leave time alone and just make it you know based on on the, your sh the shortest day the longest night and then it's done you, you don't need to move it around just because summertime has got so many more hours to it it's not really necessary yeah we've we have cycled the entire night to do a round island, starting here in Yishun and heading off to the west and going out by the Kranji farm areas and stuff and working our way down Cho Chikong and then down to um, the west coast park and, and that kind of stuff before coming back around towards the city and up by the airport and that kind of stuff. I never once did we ever feel threatened at all so we're fortunate but like i said i i came from detroit you know i know what i mean <laughs> there's a reason why they call it the murder glove it's detroit's a little uh a little crazy So yeah, the yellow string is all added and getting tucked in the back already. The big trick about adding the string is you have to make sure that you, you dump the right one and you don't lose the other strings in the process. Yeah, um, we had that in Detroit too, Young Boys Incorporated. That was um, the kids that actually carried the weapons for the real, you know, mafia type thugs. I had somebody, I was walking alongside the road, a car pulled up. That's where I was going. I'm like, I'm just going up a little ways. And then punched me and drove off. Like, punched me in my face. Like, where? Huh? I got a little closer and then just reached out and clocked me a good one. But a car that was parked by the, like, the nearest payphone to uh, my house. Well, a car was parked out in front of it. It had shotgun, um, the bucks, the the big bullets blown through the the doors of it and stuff. Um, you know, don't know what the quarrel was about or whatever, but that car was was Swiss cheese by the time that they got done with it.
That's creepy. string no sign of string added in that square at all added quite a bit of string for this whole row if you think about it so there was the changing out four blues and two oranges here changing out two oranges and two reds there and then changing out the two yellows here I've done I've did a video about the spiral bases before and that's um see my real problem with that is I do it by feel which is really super difficult um the, the gist of it is let's see if I can bring this in a little closer and kind of show you right so the distance here let's say this is one inch right um, and that inch is based on the number of, of strings there are. So there's two, four, six, seven. There's seven strings coming this direction, right? So it's seven strings per inch. If I take these two strings together and then tie a knot over both of them, I now have six strings, which is thus smaller than the one inch, right? If I do that twice over, I really have gone from seven strings to five in like no time at all. And that's what puckers the bag in to create the spiral. The spiral starts to happen when you basically kind of have to have the diamonds. And then you just start kind of bringing in two off of the first diamond two off the next, two off the next, two off the next. And that will start the whole thing in, into a process. And the, and the strings that you have left will start to form that whole spiral thing. And that's how it, it happens. The trick is once you've done the first set, you kind of get a feel for it. If when you try to, to bring the strings together, if it's going to leave a gap in between, then you're you're dropping too many too quickly and that's that's the whole gist of how the, the spiral works is now there's um there is somebody who learned from my videos do you remember what her name is something nye and white nye i want to say it's pamela nye or patricia nye or something like that there is somebody who took my videos and ran with it and she's got a, a formula for a certain number of strings i don't know if it's like 100 strings or whatever it is but she can do the spiral base um pretty well but i think she's only got it like worked out as as to how to do it for a certain number that's, that's my understanding so far um for me, like I said, I, I don't I don't have a set rules for it. And it's the problem is is like I can do graph paper for all of this. All of this here is, you know, there's an equal number of strings this way, an equal number of strings this way. I can put it all into graph paper. I can even use my special graph paper and show you what the underlying strings are. But once you start to change the numbers, when you start to go from seven to six and then the next time around then you you're you bring it in more and now it's maybe five and stuff there's no way of putting that onto paper it doesn't it doesn't play well if that makes any sense so yeah if hmm. 
sounds like somebody I should work with. <laughs> Try to help them to understand how it works. And maybe, you, maybe you understood everything I said. Maybe you can pass that along. Or have her come to my live stream and then maybe I, you know, then, uh, then I'll go and turn, go over and into her live stream too. I mean, we, that sounds like a kind of a pairing up that could happen. I'm not really good at typing, so I would probably end up having to have my wife do all this stuff for me anyways. That's, I might be able to, obviously I can talk an awful lot. That's, that's, if we have established anything, then my ability to talk for hours is there. Um, but I can't spell to save my life. Like when you guys were put in Rapunzel, I was losing my mind thinking I spelled it wrong. And I you tried to use spell check, so like, I don't know. Yeah, the spiral, the spiral base is definitely one of my like greater accomplishments like this is fun um and i'm sure people will remember the fact that i made this big giant whatever but if i was to be remembered for anything i think the spiral bases is something i would really want um to be credited for because i've never seen anybody else do the the bags the way i did it where i started at the top with the kumis and came down and then went into the spiral like that um there's a lot that started at the bottom with the mandala and that kind of stuff and that's cool and all but the spiral thing i think that's that was completely me and the weird thing is is um i even know where it is actually that's funny um typically these kind of things get tossed but i i have something about the size of my finger like a thimble was where i first tested the, the idea on it and because like i said the premise is if you have a bag with x number of strings it's that circumference is the circumference divided by the number of strings right that that makes sense right so then if you can reduce the number of strings at a reasonable rate you can get the curvature of the base so i don't know if that helps or if that just becomes more confusing but that's that's the exact gist of how i do it um and i have actually tried to see if i could mathematically work it out and and um essentially draw it out on paper like how wide it is and then kind of give myself a little bit of a curve to it and then try to figure out like what's the circumference at this point so how many strings would that be what's the circumference at this point how many strings would that be and try to work it out but at the end you kind of need to look at where you're at and what you can afford to lose and what you can't and when you can and when you can't and it turned out that playing it by eye for me was easier than trying to um, get too overly involved with the math. The math just wasn't nearly as helpful as, as I thought it would be. kind of early that's kind of brutal um do, 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 do. 27 that's what
but yeah, if there's somebody out there that's trying to do it, I mean, if I can help them figure it out, that's cool. The only bad part is, is I have to drag the wife along for the ride. <laughs> uh, how are you? 7.30. Because I can't spell? Huh? I won't be on the talking end. I wonder if there'd be a way. Now you got me curious, like the software I use to be able to switch around from this to this and everything. I wonder if there's a way of having a person Skyped in or something to be like, you know, special guest. If there's some kind of nifty method here that I completely don't see at the moment, but maybe. Should be right. Know that there's a way of doing it um if i have that's why i don't want you to give away your laptop when you pass it because there's a way of using one of my video outs as a duplicate and then i could have that stream in it and then have that come in as a camera to another computer so then i could have her on as a special guest or something that'd be fun But yeah, I'll try to I'll try to make it to the stream. Mind you, normal routine here is is that we work until rather late. I'm usually crashing between 12 and 12:30 ish. Well, winding down. And I'll go take a shower, that kind of stuff, around 12, 12:30, um, and then get up in the morning. The first alarm goes off at 11:30. And then I usually hit snooze a couple times. So, yeah. Used to be, have to be up way, way earlier and deal with mom and dad and do all kinds of stuff. But now we have a helper who takes him to his daycare and stuff. So that's kind of why the, the routine is like it is. So, but yeah, try to make it for that. And it's neat that somebody, another bracelet streaming whatever is talking about me. So that's, that feels nice. Everybody got quiet. I'm sorry, it's probably because I was busy talking to myself a lot or talking to Mandy. I'm sorry. I hope everybody's having fun. I hope everybody's enjoying the conversation and the chatting and stuff. I guess I can zoom this out now. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. I don't know what it was about bracelets when I first learned that that was even a thing. And mind you, all I was taught was the candy stripe. Um, there was just a connection with the whole ability to be creative with colors, the ability to 
um, kind of just zone out. Like it was it, me having ADHD, the ability to just sort of, I don't know, nodding is almost like, you know, how some people with yoga have mantras and things. To me, nodding is, is similar in the fact that it's really reduces my stress and uh, it's been super, super helpful for me. Mind you, lately here, I've been having trouble like staying concentrated on the work for like many hours at a time. I, I wander off, I whatever, I just can't sit still. Um, and then I get really down on myself about the whole thing. Um, and I go see the the doctor that's got me on the meds for it or whatever. I go see them uh, this next week. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, Rainbow, enjoy the noms. You have to have the noms if you're going to have the adult drinks to go after. Speaking of, So I'm starting to feel like the the goal of trying to have this done by Christmas is um, ever becoming more and more obvious that that's not going to happen. I'm not sure when it'll be done, especially if I get like waylaid into some other projects and stuff. Like I said, there's still somebody out there that wanted a, a really long. Um, how, many, how long was it? How many meters? Two meters? Three meters? It was really, it was really long. It was like 21. What's 21 times four? Huh? Like 84 inches, I think, was the length. So yeah, ridiculously long bracelet thing made, um, but it hasn't gotten back to me, so I'm not starting on it until I know what colors they want and what they they were they were talking about like having it just um, candy stripe, but I was like, really like that's really boring. Like if I was gonna make something that long, can we at least have some zigzag to it or something? Arrowhead something. square of the row. Kind of pleased. So basically before the, the video started, um, I took a little break because I wanted to be able to like add strings because that was one of the things that people were asking over in Facebook. Um, how did I do that? Uh, so I wanted to make sure this video had it. Um, but since I started, basically this whole row. So not bad. Like if I could do this kind of speed every day, I could get a lot done. Like I would be really pretty happy. The thing is, is it's just not, 
not necessarily easy for me to get this kind of focused. So yeah, this, this big pattern, despite the complexity of it or whatever, because it is, I did make it rather, rather complex. The reality is, is that at this point, it's now just about having the patience to keep going at it and making it happen. Um, anybody who can make bracelets fairly well could put something like this together if they were inclined. The I make no secrets about where I get my string from. I get it out of China through AliExpress and buying it in bulk has saved me quite a fortune because obviously the, there's only two places I know of in Singapore where I could just go if I needed to buy like DMC and that's, um, oh, three. So there's Art Friend, there's, um, what's the other Art one? Upstairs, that buzzes on. Spotlight, and a little um, mom and pop shop in Amokyo. That's it, that is the only three places I know. And the cost of string at those places is over a dollar per skein. And, um, I think I'm pay basically because I buy in bulk. I think I'm paying probably around 10 cents a skein, which makes a huge difference when you when you're cutting up like 120 skeins to get you through the week. That's uh, it's a huge huge difference. So. It is what it is. Yeah, it's huge. It's the difference is huge. Mind you, the airplane trolley is full of string. Like when I bought the the 8kg, I hadn't even actually ran out of string from before and bought 8kg and pretty much just got this thing loaded up. So anytime I feel like just a project or whatever, I can pretty much go there and pick out what I want. And the way we did it was we took a look at some of the, like the rainbow bags and things that we were buying before and tried to pick out the colors that we were using the most. Because if you try to buy, so they only have 447 colors to choose from, right? But it turns out out of that 447, a lot of it is green. You know, because people who do cross stitch do a lot of like trees and outdoors and that kind of stuff. There's a lot more colors of green than there are of anything else. Like the one that's the fewest is yellow. Um, there's a fair amount of blue. Um, not a ton of purple. There's more purple than there is yellow, but you know, so basically trying to to get the colors that you know are going to get used the most kind of narrowed it down but that's you know and then there were uh, a few bigger bulk prop ones like i bought i bought a boatload oh man 
something something with the lights and the colors or whatever is net the camera is not liking that it's red does that look weird on yours it looks really weird on my computer um it's like the whole brightness or something is off i don't know why that's so weird it's creepy um but it's four gray and then there's four shades of red and i have basically enough to make a whole nother bag like this because a friend said that's what she wanted so i buy all the string for it and then she uh and when I talked to her about like, hey, I got all the string. String for what? So yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. That could end up being the colors I use for that giant project if the, the person chooses to do that. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah, I'm not sure why the, the camera would not take well to that. But yeah, 10 cents is way more doable when you think big projects or whatever. It's it really becomes a deciding factor because honestly, I can't imagine you know purchasing. Mind you, too, um, Spotlight String is DMC, right? So DMC Floss is smaller, right? And it's you wouldn't necessarily notice it, like just picking it up by and by hand or whatever. But if you did two bracelets, you did one with this Chinese string and then do another one with it, you'll see there's a difference. And if there's a difference in one bracelet width, say 10, 12 strings, whatever, whatever it is you're using, and you do two of them side by side, let's say you, you have a 12 string bracelet and you do two of them side by side, the difference might be as much as three or four millimeters. But if you multiply three or four millimeters times, say, I don't know, you're making a bag that could be easily 12, that adds up a lot, you know? That, that's a big, big difference. So, you know, I don't know, for me, it's kind of cool that this stuff takes up more space, but it wasn't cool when I made the second bag because the first bag was the wife was really happy about its size and wanted it kind of rectangled off at the bottom. And I'm like, great, I know exactly how to do that. It's so much easier than, than the other way, right? Got right to it. And the pattern was absolutely hell. It was, it just took so long. And I hated it. Um, started it probably in November. Got it finished probably in February, I think, give or take. It, it just seemed like it was taking forever. Um, and when I, the whole thing was finished and I gave her the bag, she hated it, said it was too big. And when I compared the size of it in the first bag, yeah, there was a huge difference because the first bag was made up from Daiso, right? So seeing as how a couple of you are actually from Singapore, right? You guys know um, Daiso, right? So it was like 12 strings for two bucks, which was like the perfect price for playing with something that where I had no idea how I was going to necessarily do it. And, you know, it was just, I had this idea. I could make a bag. It's going to be cool. And, um, yeah, I, I put together a bag. It didn't take me very long. And um, it turned out pretty, pretty cool. It was, I think, judging by some of the, the reminders and stuff that have come through from Instagram and Facebook, it looks like it took me about a month to put together the first one. But um, other posts make it look like it was actually shorter than that. So I'm really not... I really don't remember that was years ago now and I've made so many bags since then my problem wasn't even the fact that they broke easily my problem was the fact that, that 
if you pick up one string, all the other strings that are in its general vicinity want to come up with it because it's very like prickly or whatever. And it was, I never had a problem with any of it breaking, maybe because I double up my string. Um, but Mandy hated the Kumi process for the loops. And mind you, the bag's still, it's still here. Uh, it's still in, in great shape or whatever. So the string wasn't exactly complete rubbish. But it was it was the ones, I don't know if you've seen it, it's the cardboard and then the, the plastic comes up over the top and there's the 12, 12 strings are inside. Um, you know, so you get 12 skeins for two bucks. And I tried to balance the colors. I wanted the it to be where I used all the colors evenly and shifted or whatever, but somehow I got it wrong and ended up using a couple of the colors more than the others. And as a result, I ended up having to go out and try to find more string. And because Daiso is not really reliable as far as like keeping things in stock, um, there was almost a meltdown period where I didn't, I wasn't gonna have the string to actually complete the project. And I had no idea what I was gonna do about that. I was like seriously losing my mind. I went, um, I was in Chinatown. I was in um, Sambawan. I um, can't remember where I ended up actually finally, finally finding the string I needed, but it wasn't without having um, a complete mental breakdown. Like I really lost my mind for a minute there. That was tough. Touch of water here. Uh. But yeah, kind of, kind of fun to having some locals around that like actually know like some of the places I t talk about. Have yeah, like so many stories like the um that second bag in order to kind of take a break from how monotonous it was making this this monstrosity um I actually took a bike ride from um yishun here over into pangal and along the pangal water way um there with a clipboard and leaning against the the front part of the bike or whatever I worked on the bag just to have a break in scenery and, and uh, you know, change of space and get out of the house and stuff for a bit. Yeah, there's some, some pretty funny pictures somewhere. Uh, might be, might be Facebook, might be Instagram, not sure, but yeah. All right. Another row, another bunch of strings to get changed, I see. So I need... Blues and oranges again. All right, be right back. It's not far. It's just out of the camera's sight, so... So the size string I'm using is still one third of a skein. In case anybody's wondering about that. And I am going to change up two blues at once. So here we go again. This time I'm gonna to go to the right. So I do half of it and leave this up high out of the way.
And I'm really cautious about making sure the two ends are together. It's because if you don't have the ends lined up, you end up losing, let's say it's like this. So we have one end down here by my thumb and the other up there. I end up losing that much string because, you know, they're not together. So by just putting them together, I get the most out of it. Not only that, it makes it kind of longer for pulling it through, which that can kind of get tiring. Like just change, I used to always cut my strings in quarters. And when I changed to the one third, it felt really different. It felt really difficult to work with at first. But once I got used to it and got the whole motion and everything down, um, it became natural. So and for me, it just makes the most amount of sense because with the one third length, um, pretty much any pattern that I would make into a bracelet, um, I have enough string with it. I don't, I know that some people, like even Rainbow Haze talks about like measuring according to the bracelets need. For me, I would just rather have all my strings cut to where there's no chance of me running out and then just go with it than to have to worry about like not doing my math correct and then suddenly my string is too short and I don't know what I'm going to do. But that's that's a personal preference. Like honestly, I can see the benefits of being able to measure to the the size of the bracelet that you're making. I get it. You get get more string out of the whatever. But at some point all that extra time and and chance i don't know i i just i the possibility of getting it wrong just scares me too much on a project like this though obviously i'm changing up the string the not a problem there but on bracelets I wouldn't want to change up the string just because some people like to actually have the reverse side of the of the uh, the bracelet they like to have it upside down essentially obviously I do not hence you know why I call it upside down but yeah, I've, I've sold a number of bracelets and watched them tie it on upside down. I'm just like, that's, that's no. And they're like, no, but I like it better this way. Okay. Ow. <laughs> well. Yeah, so speaking of recycling the leftovers, I'm planning on trying to send a couple kg of, of leftovers to the UK once I get the, the address and stuff. It's, it's gonna cost me a bit, but it should be worth it, it should be fun. Well, Amanda, you you are fortunate. When you made this, honestly, when I what I did was I tied this as close to the two knots as possible. Like it's like literally, there's no more room for it. And then I slipped my hand into it, 
and it's just enough. I mean, barely just enough. So you actually got that one right on the money. Like if I was, if I gain weight or whatever, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, but then if I turn it upside down, look. No, it doesn't do my name then. It has to go this way. No, it's okay. It, it turned out to be the right size. Like, it totally worked out. Personally, I don't like having a lot of little tail left over anyways. So what I usually do is like on this one, I tied the knot and then took the tails and tied knots of the tails right up next to the knot that way it can't slip out and um that way it stays on because most of the time i wear bracelets until they die this one just seems very christmasy though and i want to put it on i want to tie a knot it ends here and here and then glue it onto the airplane trolley so i have it for a really long time Yeah, I agree. We get, we see it because we, we look at the knots. We know how the whole thing played out in our heads. We were tightening the knots so that way the side that we're looking at is as pretty as possible. And when somebody picks it up and flips it over, yeah, it's more fractaled out, I guess. Maybe that's what they like about it. Hey, Helena. Hello. <clears throat> Helena, we missed you last Sunday. can't say I blame you. Sleep is, uh, <laughs> we were just talking about in two weeks, me trying to show up to somebody else's live stream. And already I'm dreading the notion of getting up so early. Amanda, that's 
it's not to say the backs aren't cool, but if you're doing, say, like an arrowhead, then you can see the direction that the knot took, where on the front you can't. It just looks like it's all perfectly symmetrical or whatever. But on the back, you can see the change ups and wh which direction things went. So. Still not a personal fan of doing it backwards. I would never. Well, I say I would never do that to somebody, but I imagine if I went into a shop and somebody or somebody made it or whatever, just to toy with them, I turned around just to see what the reaction was. I've actually, this is true. And this is something if you guys have never tried, you should maybe give it a shot. Um, I've done patterns where I flipped the whole thing over part way through it. So part of the, you know, if it's like a symmetrical design or, or whatever, um, I wish I had some examples. Actually, hang on. I do have examples. Show you something neat. I have a ton of bracelets I've made. Okay, so say a pattern like this, right? This is a real simple one that I'm sure that we all know pretty well or done some kind of variation on this. Because each one of these things is of such a distinct um, segment, if you flip it over when you get to the next segment and then flip it back and then flip it over and flip it back, you can have a bracelet that doesn't have a right side up just you know um this is another good one for that you know because it's got distinct portions the greens face one direction the blues face the other um let's see what else you could do it with this one you could make the center row of this now mind you this would take a lot longer because you'd be flipping it uh you know all the time but you could do the whole center row facing the other direction because it's not it's not like a um, like a zigzag where the you would see the directional change ups something like this would be a really perfect one for doing it so both sides have the the same sort of whatever going on just as something to try if you feel like you've done it all you can try it doing it all again but this time with um bracelets that are made to go in either direction I hope that makes sense yeah I'm pretty sure I've seen something like that in a regular macrame and I'm um, I actually know somebody who was trying to learn how to make bracelets. Um, he wanted to make them like I do, but then for whatever reason, he was t he made the other side upwards. And I was just like, what? No, no, evil, <laughs> not cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I kind of, in my head sort of see how it might work still evil <laughs> so this one i just changed out these two blues right here um and the the shorter pieces of them ended up with staying with the whites so as i bring the orange in um 
the I have to keep track of where those short blues are to make sure that that stays on track. Yeah, I'm so stuck on my ways. I can't picture not flipping it to do it. But yes, you guys are right. There is a way of doing it and there's a way to make it. And if I familiarized with it, I would probably get it in pretty quickly, but. Is it weird that I try not to watch YouTube videos on bracelets only because I don't want anybody saying that I nicked their ideas or their, their style? Yeah, when I think of how much nodding in the, the style that I do, how much I've done it, it's probably developed a habit, I guess, for the, the nature of how I do my thing. It would be really hard for me to try to break it and to think doing it differently. Like just even just thinking that, you know, I would have to try to hold the string differently or whatever just gives me anxieties. Oh, we have a date when our merch is coming. It's the 20... By the 23rd, I think. So, a little way, ways off. Should have... There's still one item missing, and there we've been in contact with them, and we explained the whole situation of why we don't know what the one item is that's missing. But they they're all about getting that resolved when we figure out which one it is. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. Like this is finally the stuff's going to be here. up a good point we would have already had this the merch here quite some time ago if not for the fact that one item was missing and basically what we did was we had it sent to a place in the states where they will take all the, the everything that comes in like all the individual packages um, bundle it all together and then send it to Singapore really cheap um, saved us a fortune on shipping but 
because one item was missing, we held off and were waiting and waiting to see if the one item would get there. And as it was getting closer to where um, Easy Buy would end up charging us for storage or whatever, um, it pretty much just came down to it's easier just to have the stuff delivered and then tell them what is missing. And we'll see how they handle it. Like I'm kind of, you know, kind of hoping that they'll say, okay, our fault, we, we missed up whatever, and they send it straight to Singapore. That's my hope. Um, alternative, I guess, is they send it to the place in Seattle. So we'll see what happens. I guess in some ways it's kind of cool that, that there is this little bit of drama going on because I am curious as to see how they handle it and uh, how well it turns out. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. This is, I'm really close to the end now. I'm not sure how much more, I'm not sure how long it'll take me either, but having the end in sight is definitely like the endorphin pick me up that I need to try to get this thing going and finish it up. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I, I got kind of in a zone there. I just changed up four blues and two oranges in that square. So that was kind of cool. Back to being all quiet again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just kind of getting little music's going in in the background, sort of slightly mesmerizing. feeling like in my hands like nope that's bad yep oh I'm sorry Amanda my uh Adult beverages are helping keep me up. Aww. Well, depending on how bad the blister was, there is some that will end up turning into like a callus or whatever and then you're okay to not. Um, others, if it's still liquidy underneath, then you don't want to do that.
I have that same problem, except for it's mostly because I don't pay attention and I hit enter excitedly. All right, let's see, I need orange and reds. Okay, Amanda, you have a good night. Thank you for hanging out with us and giving a good try on the, <laughs> the word thing. You guys were hilarious. Um, yeah. Love the bracelet, by the way. All right, red and orange. There is no grading on YouTube chats. You can be as as uh, terrible speller as you want. However, it might, might mean we understand you, but. Seems like there should be some room for adult beverages to end up kind of working themselves in there. Yeah, I was not a good student. Doop, 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 doop. Let's see. I too know the feeling of delivery stuff. Did you guys have um, in Canada, did you guys have sales based on the 1111 11 thing? Yeah, so we have, in China, they call it Singles Day. So November 11th is Singles Day because all the ones. And as a result, there is a ton of sales. And every other wannabe um, AliExpress has got their, you know, they if they want to compete, they too have to have sales. So as a result we basically now wait until then to make any kind of purchases. Like I got a coffee maker and um, a bunch of like little things, you know, just whatever. So the next couple of weeks, um, pretty much going to be probably getting up early to make sure that I'm dressed 
because the doorbell is going to ring and it'll be whatever stuff. Some of it's like Christmas presents for our friends and stuff. Like we got to um, purchase some of the stuff on sales and stuff. That was great. Oh. Oh, right, gotcha. Yeah, so we we didn't get a ton of things this time around. I would just been corrected apparently. Yes, we did. I didn't ask for as many things this time around. Uh, so yeah, it's the whole singles day thing has turned into something pretty whatever, serious fun, but I got a coffee maker that's coming somewhere between Tuesday and Tuesday after it. Oh, because she used the word shop. That's fine. Oh wait, it's in the end of the sentence, or mid-sentence. How did it trigger? How did that get triggered and not the whole... You want to try to play with this and see if you can figure out why I got this wrong? I have to admit, this is this whole being locked down, or I guess we're not technically locked down right now, but the the whole restrictions or whatever else makes it feel like it's better that you just stay in. I don't know. It's got me to where like I'd much rather do online shopping because I just. I think I'd be kind of awkward around people anymore. I don't know. I, it's it's gotten to the point where, you know, I don't know. I, I just not prepared to deal with other humans. change the cool down just for like five seconds or something for now just so we can test it. And then down to save it down. down.
Yeah, so it should be. <laughs> uh, not how many, but yes. Nice. So we're going to do, Mandy's did some editing to the code I put into the bot. She's going to do some testing to see whether or not we can figure out why the, the bot never responded to you earlier. Well, you can do it too. It's not that it doesn't know that you're different. There it is. Finally there. That's the thing. That's what was supposed to happen. Oh. Uh, okay, so basically I screwed the pooch and um, my wife has fixed it. Um, so how many seconds do you have? Five, like five seconds or something? Okay, just out of curiosity, try doing it though, like how you did it before, like where it wasn't the first thing in the sentence. Just to, just because I want to make sure that that's not. Yes, I almost did it. I, that's almost what the text said, winner, winner, chicken dinner. But then I was afraid people would be like, excuse me, I want a bracelet and a chicken dinner. Big drum roll. Uh, there it is. Okay, so it is. That's it. It's been fixed. So now I just had to find a new word to put in there. And um, sweet. Cool. Thank you. Gothic, I don't think you'd be saying that if you knew that we were just recently talking about pet sulkies. Tiny, the sulkies. actually starting to kind of feel like a, a munchie coming on. Mind you, I have no idea, like, I know that Silkies as a pet is supposed to be a thing, but if you said, okay, go get one, I honestly have no clue how to acquire a silky. None. The other thing about having one, I think would be as fun as it would be to have, we would have to get our windows barricaded more, right? 
Like if it, it, it jumped up on the window ledge, it would jump out the window. <laughs> There's a lid on the tank, the bird wouldn't get to the fishies. Yeah. Mom always, uh, talked about the little shrimp and the and the fishes as being things that she could use in her cooking at least making stock of them for a person who used to threaten that an awful lot she also was a person to grab a bar stool and sit in front of the tank and be mesmerized for an hour never liked the idea of raw fish apparently yeah somehow that doesn't shock me at all Yeah, two things about sushi. One, my wife was shocked when a friend of mine took me out for sushi and I didn't mind it. And the second thing was, I was, the photos showed me eating sushi, sushi with chopsticks. And it, uh, apparently my chopstick skill is pretty good. And she was shocked at that considering, you know, coming from the West didn't seem like, you know, I would be a chopstick wielding kind of guy. But it was always a novelty going to a Chinese restaurant and having chopsticks there and trying them out. So, yeah. Yeah, I kind of kind of started out with the idea like, I don't know if I want to eat that. It doesn't look like oh god that's good oh hot damn give me give me some more of that wasabi stuff woohoo yeah i have inadvertently ended up on on a few occasions of going oh i only eat what there's only 12 plates oh crap i can't move <laughs> yeah i love me some raw, raw salmon oh man See, rules are being broken here, I'll have you know. There are rules about mentioning food that we can't have because of, you know, the hours or whatever. It's 
See, okay. Honestly, try take your time. Grab some, grab like a like a bag of potato chips or popcorn, and play with the chopsticks. Just take your time and learn them. Because, honestly, any kind of snack that you might want, like salty chips or whatever, you can pick up chopsticks and eat those and keep your fingers clean so that way you can continue working on your project whether it's your needlepoint or tying knots chopsticks are perfect for that sort of thing plus let's say you're eating popcorn with chopsticks you can't get a handful you're down to eating a kernel or two at a time it will slow you down and keep you from like going all kind of buck wild yeah it's not super difficult i mean you can hold a pen you can hold chopsticks Yes, that is an alternative. Yeah, it's seriously eating with chopsticks to keep your fingers clean is definitely the way to go. It's so Are these people skinny out of curiosity? <laughs> I got I, I can't I can't imagine if you're packing the chips down like that. I suppose they also then take the chips and kind of crumple the bag, like, right? Kind of crush the bag just so that way you get smaller pieces for doing that. Yeah, for me, slowing down and taking longer to eat the snacks is part of my whole trying to actively get skinnier, you know? Don't get, don't make it so that way I can put a bag of chips down inside of five minutes, that'd be bad. So there is a definite loop or lag between the time that I can read what you say and the time that you'll hear me reply to it. Like that's, I, that's a given. Like I know for a fact that that's a thing. So, um, yeah. Nothing I can do about that one. And it's not even like, because my computer isn't fast enough or whatever else. There's like an actual thing about it. Like here, I'll try to see if I can time it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
So there's almost a 30 second delay between when I do something and it happening on the computer. So at least 30 seconds. Well, as long as you're healthy, there's nothing wrong with, with having the weight. You don't seem like unhealthy or whatever. For me, I'm having to try to lose weight because it's, um, it's affecting my blood pressure and that's being handled by medication. But if I could skip the medication, that could add up to being like a, almost a vacation per year so that's my goal like I, i'm not fat shaming or anything it's a case of um it's better for my health it would save me money you know between doctor visits and the medication to control the blood pressure seriously it would be a nice little vacation annually you know just on the on the savings so and not like a a staycation kind of thing like actually go wander off somewhere nice mind you there's a lot for me there's a lot of nice stuff nearby there's a lot of thailand is an hour flight um how long is the boat ride to um bali no, the other one, the one that, that uh, you can only get there by boat uh, or by flight. Okay, how long is the flight? Oh, huh? No way. It's not that far away. Yeah. Bintan, there's yeah, is a little island in Indonesia that's a fun little resorty place. That's like an hour boat ride. Hello, person with Japanese-looking letters. It's been a while. Thank you, thank you. I the pattern is huge. Um, me with project. It is a huge one, and I would say hello to your name, but I can't read what those letters are. But. We are doing well. We are doing very well. Thank you. Yeah, we really are close to amazing holiday destinations. Bali is, is what did you say? It's three hour? A three hour flight. Um, Indonesia, also what? How long did it take our flight to there? We went to about three hours to get to Java Island, which was, um, we ended up going to Yogyakarta, and then we went to Borbador, which is like this giant um, temple thing, which was amazing. Oh, well, hello. Hello. You're, the Japanese letters had me thrown. Hello. Long time, indeed. The last I heard from you, you were saying that you, um, your husband's job was shifting and you were going somewhere else and it might be top secret or something. And yeah, that was, that was months ago. Are you allowed to even say what time zone you're in?
when we landed, we weren't at the closest airport, were we? Or were we? We were? About an hour? It was like we taxied longer than the flight was. It was like we were waiting in line to land at the airport longer than what the whole of the flight was. Oh, okay. I guess that would explain the Japanese writing. So yeah, no, that's cool. Was it about two hours? Yeah, it's not very long. Yeah, you came in right during the middle of a bit of a rant or something there. It wasn't really a rant, but talking about the fact that if I could improve my health and get off the meds, we could have more vacations. Because Lord knows, once everything opens up, I want to get out. Learning another language is, to me, one of the most amazing things. I, I marvel over my wife's ability to speak two languages. Well, speak two languages fluently, plus some other languages she at least knows well enough to be able to order food. The GoPro is here. This is, this is the GoPro that revised new help me get the old GoPro died the the GoPro 3 that I had it was it's uh it bit it the dust is it didn't have the ability to operate without a battery like this this one I don't have a battery plugged in it's working directly off of the the power cable the USB power source but the old one um, required a battery and the battery just expanded until it puked. So yeah, this camera, hello, this camera is a, um, Logitech webcam. Well, yeah, but at least this camera works really nicely. This it's, I'm not even like it in close, I'm not super fish eyed or anything. So I'm really happy with that camera. Actually, there is a, a another webcam around here somewhere. I'm not entirely certain where it is, but it was the webcam that she used back in back to talk to me back 13 years ago. More, almost 14 years now, right? Like how that webcam, the little old one. So that little webcam is like 14 years old. So its resolution is the equivalent of the tin can in a string. <laughs> so how are restrictions in Japan in regards to like masks and getting out and and basically, like, are you, is right, right? But she'd be on the base, so then it might be like American standards on base. <laughs> it shoots like a potato. 
Yes. Plus that side of the the room. So this room was originally a study for the girls to come in, you know, and do their schoolwork and stuff. And then it be when the girls got older and out of school, the room basically became a catch all. And we're still in the process of determining what things stay and what things go and what things might want to be inherited by the daughters and stuff like that. So this little space here has been made nice enough to not hate it. Um, but it's, yeah, the rest of the room, not so much. So, yeah, I've, if there's any saving grace for Mandy not having a Mandy cam, it's the fact that we would have to do more arranging. Well, that's good. So, better but not great. Do you guys have restrictions like if you're vaxxed or not vaxxed kind of stuff? Because like over here, you actually have to show um, like on your phone to show that you're vaccinated to be able to go into a mall. Like that's, that's seriously a thing. Like it's, or we have um, these little keychain key fob type things that has Bluetooth in it and you wave it in front of the, the scanner at the mall and that tells you um, they can see on their computer like if when you beep in that uh, you've been vaccinated and it'll let you go. Yeah, we have a lot of shops closing up early, but not just because they're trying to encourage people to stay in, but because there's so many, so fewer people out that um, staffing the store to late hours doesn't make any sense. It's crippled a lot of businesses. A lot of places that we liked are gone now, which is a shame. So that's how it used to be here, but um, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff to try to get these people who aren't vaccinated, vaccinated, including they just recently said that if you basically like for me, right, like out the gate, if I had come down with COVID, they would have covered my doctor bills. And now that I'm vaccinated, they still will. They'll still actually, like if I end up in the hospital or whatever, because I'm vaccinated, I'm covered. But to anybody who hasn't vaccinated, even if they're a born here, you know, mind you, like the fact that uh, me as a visitor still, the fact that they would do that, I thought was pretty amazing. But even if you're born here, if you're not vaccinated, you're looking at the possibility of like upwards of $25,000 for hospitalization bills and they want you to know right now 
if you're not vaxxed and you have to do this, then you better be prepared to pay up. Um, as a kind of a last ditch effort to get people motivated and get people to to take the, the jabs, so. Yeah, I don't, I haven't been out too much. Um, occasionally I've just things I've needed or whatever. But like I said, I, mean, I, I almost need therapy to make it so I'm not awkward around people anymore. Like I really honestly have gotten so used to being indoors and, and not doing anything else for so long. It's going to be weird. We had a kitchen sinks, the end of the faucet thing kind of spoiled. So I had recently went out over to the mall and tried to see if I could find some uh, painter's tape. And uh, yeah, just being, being out there and being around people and yeah, not fun. And then what was it last week that we took dad to the, I took dad to the doctor? Yeah, last week took dad to uh, his psychiatrist who uh, basically helped up his meds and stuff. That wasn't fun. Dad, dad gets on his best behaviors around the doctors, but whatever. Yeah, you guys seemed in the UK really late to the game when it came to masks and all that kind of stuff it was weird. That sounds like a lot of fun. I did not know there is an anime district. Yeah, I know, I know, I know that's where it all comes from. I didn't know there'd be like a district of it. I know that's where it comes from. But now I, I want, I want to go. <laughs> I'm sure you guys would do well. Oh, and I think the cool thing of that is that uh, if you're a little one that does the, I forgot what you call it, but the crocheting little figures, if she gets inspired while there, that could be really cool. I just saw somebody did a little crochet thing, just smaller than a softball, maybe a baseball size. Um, crocheted of Kevin from Deep Space. I don't know if you ever seen the the cartoon, but yeah, Kevin spelled K V N. Um, absolutely the cutest little whatever. I'm not a very liked character, but still a funny character from a very funny show. It sounds amazing. So is there any of the anime stuff that you guys like that, that I would actually know? Mind you, I'm limited in A, I don't speak Jap Japanese and only had whatever shows were translated into English for the US. So not a lot. Thank you. 
can't imagine like oh man I would lose my mind like Naruto and the who is the artist that did the we saw the movie from the the airplane one any of his stuff Spirit Away guy what is that called Chibi Studios huh Studio Ghibli. Yeah, if anything's from Studio Ghibli, I think I would lose my mind. What? Oh, is it in the... Is Studio Ghibli in that anime district? Like, they're supposed to be a museum or something? No. I've got wife feeding me information and trying to watch over here information. Where is that? Is that in Tokyo? Yeah. Cowboy Bebop, hell yeah. That's in One Piece, yeah. I know of Sailor Moon. Um, if I think any boy has, has seen at least something from there, but uh, I don't know the Demon Slayer. I, I, did, I did used to like Bleach. That was sort of a dark, slaying, monstery thing. It was a lot of fun. And Yo Yo Yakusho. Who are some of the other ones? Um, Trigun, yeah, for sure. What was the one with the the, the alchemy? Um, the one boy that got got put into the tin. Um, thing. What the hell? Um, Full Metal Al Alchemist. Used to love that one. Yeah, and y Inuyasha. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, it sounds like you guys are going to have a lot of fun. something you should look for. So I have this pen that's made in Japan. It's N-I-J-I, I think, is the name. I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. Yeah, I can't fix the lighting. Let's see if does it. Let's try this. Just won't get the focus on it. But it's called a quad point, and it's a Japanese pen. And I bought this thing probably in around '95, and I still have it, and it is still my absolute favorite pen. Um. So. I have it facing me, there's a black dot, and if I push down on, on the thing, I get a black pen. If I turn it, there's a blue square at the top. I don't know if you can, really, I don't know why you can't see that. There's a blue square, and if I turn that to where that's facing me, I push down, the tip is now blue. And then turn it to this side, it's red square, and the pen is red. And turn it to this side, and it says point, 0.5 or 0 0.05 and it's a pencil and then you click it click it to get the pencil lead to come down more it is literally one of the coolest things i have that i know is japanese and i've had it for so many years and the ink refills are stupid cheap so yeah it's a great little thing um 
but I know now that I think the company that makes it doesn't make it necessarily anymore. So like collectors or whatever, kind of some people are kind of snagging them up, but you might actually find them still in Japan. But yeah, super cool pen, a lot of fun. And I got it back when like Franklin planners were like the thing and having different colors for the one book. Like now I use it with my um, bullet journal. Um, but having all the different colors means I can actually put different things, different information in, in colors and stuff. So yeah, it's really, really cool. A heat erasable pen? That sounds fun. That sounds really interesting. Like, how much heat does it take to make it erase? Like body heat or really hot or... Bring me a drink. You have a heat? Why have I never heard of this? Everybody seems to have stuff I don't, I've never even heard of. How is that? What is a heat erasable pen? Research department. What's a heat erasable pen? That's great if you want to send somebody a letter that you know that they can't hold against you if they throw that in the road. That's really neat. Because I was just picturing, like, if you could make a note disappear, like, you know, that would have been great back in the school days. Wow. Suicide painting. Mandy says we can get them here. I've never seen it. I've never even heard of it. It's not even like... Yeah, especially now. It's kind of sad. I have... Have this little pen case and then this thing slides down Hang on. and I have a whole rainbow of these gel pens because I was making mandalas in multiple colors so I have a bunch of the fine points and a bunch of colors for making rainbowish mandalas because that um that was a relaxing way of getting out wait so you're not just learning how to sp to speak in japanese you're actually writing it too that's Intense.
that's cool. So we have a friend here who she is so okay so let's face it a little history of Singapore Singapore was invaded by Japan got taken over for a little while before Japan had to finally surrender and give up everything blah 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 so to like Japanese things is truly the counterculture so we know a gal who's a bit awkward and she likes Japanese anime and whatnot and to the point that she studied Japanese and knows it pretty well enough that she can watch the TV shows in its original whatever and enjoy it. So when she went off and um, to Japan and tried to be all super cool and speak, you know, Japanese and whatever, they weren't exactly yay you can speak japanese they were more like foreigner please and her friend who didn't speak japanese who um was just nice and polite and trying to just do her best you know like you know trying to use english in a minimalistic whatever um yeah that got way more attention so yeah Isn't that the name of the area in the west? How is it close to the spelling? Crunchy and kind of one letter. Is there any relation? Okay. See, now I'm thinking about Jap Japanese writing and the only th what was what was the over the top movie where all the colors were super vibrant oh Hero have you ever seen the movie Hero where supposedly he he knew the fighting style based on the person's calligraphy Yeah, just a <laughs> rainbow. Just imagine if you've been dumped in the uh, the south of, of um, the United States. You know, you would you would never understand anything they were saying with the the southern slang and the y'all and all that. Ugh. Did I have Jet Lee? Yeah, I think maybe. Um, yes, I think it was. Was the, the movie hero? Yes. My wife is nodding yes. Yes, it was an amazing, amazing movie. Like, holy crap. The Every scene, the colors were so good.
he was the director of that movie was the one who helped put together Japan's um, Olympics. That's why their opening ceremony or whatever for the Olympics was so over the top. Yes, I have. Um, my mom was from England. I've been to England four times. Twice on my own, twice as a kid. And yes, I have relatives that I can't understand a effing thing they say. <laughs> we wait tell her the sentence with the can 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 where the uncle gets hit in the head with the can there's there's literally a, a thing that happened around here and yeah, it's based on tones and I can't, there's no possible way I can say it, but basically somebody threw a can out a window and it hits the old man in the head and he, somebody's trying to tell the story of how this uncle got hit with, by the thing. And the whole sentence is can, 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 which we know somebody who can actually pronounce it properly enough to actually say it, but the whole thing to anybody else would be almost impossible and yeah the fact that there's even sentences like that make me just go nope i i i'm not gonna learn i'm not gonna do it i'll ni hao all day long you know which is like their hello but forget the rest uh -uh. i don't know if japan's any easier but nope. Mind you, I do, I could see the fun of it because nobody expects the American to say hello in Chinese or Shishini to say thank you. Nobody expects it. So when I do it, they're like, oh, oh, you know, which is cute, but um, no, no, too hard. Right. Right. The thing that gets me is for every vowel, there's like four different tones for the vowel, right? Which turns all kind. like I can't make E turn four different ways. It just doesn't, I don't get it. I don't get how A can go four different ways. And it's, it's nuancy. It's, I can have the wife say it like 15 times and I'm like, I don't see the difference. There's, you know, it's, it's that meme like, nope, those, I, they're the same picture. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, it's these little subtle nuances on the vowels that can make a word go from a 
good word to a bad word, or, you know. Nope. You can find yourself cussing or doing all kinds of whatevers too easily. No. That's... No, that sounds bad. That sounds difficult. I know, like, the, like there's the the Africans have the, you know, in the in the words, which is bad enough. Oh man. If I knew that there was a language for whistling, I, I could just picture, like, naming my son the wolf whistle, you know? What's your name? Yeah, that would be awesome. Before I had a lot of teeth problems, I used to be able to do the wolf whistle, which can be heard for quite a ways, but not anymore. I uh, once upon a time had a tongue ring, and um, it turns out that if you bite down on stainless steel, you can crack your teeth and damage them. So I have all kinds of dental problems. You don't see me smile much. I can't so I'm picturing let's say let's say somebody let's say in Europe figures village in Europe figures out how to do this language and then you got like the husbands wandered off to the pub and somebody near the pub has seen him go in and they're whistling back to his wife you know oh he's out drinking again and whistling up or whatever the number of people that can eavesdrop and be like, oh, Henry's at the pub again. Oh, it sounds like he's about to get himself in trouble. Like, not just like a little bit of a conversation, like normal eavesdropping in, like the whole damn village can hear the whistles. And if they're all in on the language, like the privacy level completely gone. And yeah. <laughs> My wife says that's maybe why the language is dying. <laughs> like, just, I just concede, like, too many easy ways that that could just be really bad. Yeah. So, I know the click, um... Who was the comedian? Was it um, Noah? Uh, what's his name? Trevor Noah? I think Trevor Noah did a thing about it. Or somebody was talking about like they went into a casino and the guy's name had an exclamation point on the badge. And so he's tried to say the rest of the name really loud or whatever. 
They're like, that's not what it's for. It's like... And, yeah. Hilarious ensued after. But yeah, okay, so it is 1.30 in the morning here. And... Which is kind of kind of late for taking showers and stuff and possibly getting something to eat so i think i have to call it a night i want to thank everybody who's hung out with us um definitely <laughs> throw that out there thank you guys it's been awesome um yeah it's just been a been a, quite a long day. I actually got up early this morning to get my workout in before it got too crazy. So, um, yeah, I think I will um, call it a night. You guys have been awesome. You guys have been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of laughs. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and definitely I want to hope to catch up soon. And yeah, Rainbow, um, hey, send me the link. I will check that out. So, and I will get your bracelet into the mail. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It's been real. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we'll be here again next week. And hopefully with a bunch more progress. So, we'll see how that goes. All right. But uh, until next time, don't get your strings in a bunch. <laughs>